Who was protecting these girls? Three adorable little girls looking for a home, a forever family. There's no way to describe what happened in my heart. I just wanted to mother them. Who wouldn't want them? An adoption that looked perfect on paper. When an Arkansas state representative and his wife, deeply religious, with three sons of their own, took in these three young sisters with a troubled past. Because it's my job to keep you safe and protected. They thought they were prepared. They weren't. The counselor said if we loved them enough, that it would get better. And it never got better. Now the outrage when they changed their minds. An adoption gone wrong. And gave the girls away. Would you put them on eBay? You are a monster yourself. Absolutely disgraceful and reprehensible. You naively walked in and in desperation naively got out. They say they had no choice. They had to save themselves. Well, she was going to kill me with a knife. She was going to bash her brother's heads in. But a babysitter and others claim the parents thought the girls were possessed. Wait, I'm sorry, she told you what? They had demons. Demons? The girls wanted these demons and would never let them go. Tonight, the video they said was proof of their nonstop nightmare. This is what I'm dealing with, 8 to 12 hours a day. They said we weren't equipped because of our political beliefs. Maybe it's really because you weren't equipped. Are you ready? And for the first time on camera, the little girl's in the middle of the tug of war. I glued the heart on in the middle. It just sounds like you guys are passing kids around like they're pets. Good evening. A firestorm of outrage essentially coming down to a single question we're asking right here tonight. When things don't work out with your adopted children, can you simply give them away to an acquaintance or someone you barely know? Elizabeth has been tracking this case now for months. That's right, David. Those little girls trying to find a forever family. But what happened when that family, those new parents, allegedly said the girls had demons? Well, some people wondered if they were the real demons for their about face. One note, to protect the girls' privacy, we are not showing their faces or using their names. Come to Northwest Arkansas, and here, amid the beauty of the Ozark Mountains, you'll find a landscape dotted with haystacks and church steeples. The air filled with bird song and the joyful noise of gospel choirs. As you drive south from Fayetteville, you reach the tiny town of West Fork. Blink and you'll miss it. You think it'd be how to be saved? Or it was think? here that Justin and Marcia Harris were raising their three boys in a devoutly Christian household. Heavenly Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for today. When one evening after dinner, they received a mysterious phone call from a woman they had never met, the mother of three little girls, making a request they never expected. Will you please take my daughters. You know, she's going to lose her children. But did you ask her why she was losing her daughters? Of course, she didn't tell me much of anything. Take my daughters, three sisters, ages four, two, and nine months. A strange request, yes, but not an absurd one. The Harrises are known as child care professionals. They hold degrees in child development. They run a Christian daycare center called Growing God's Kingdom. Thank you, Madam Chair. And Justin, running as a family values conservative, has been elected to the state legislature. Hi, my name is Justin Harris. I represent District 81. Isaiah, is it your turn to do the card devotion? Spend any time with them and you will see right away it is all about faith and family. God, I pray that you help me as I work through today. Marcia described Justin as a father. He's loving and patient and he puts his children first. I couldn't ask for him to be a better dad. Why does it make you emotional, Justin? Because I love my family so much. I think that's what's important at the end of the day. So important, in fact, that the Harrises had already decided years ago that they wanted to adopt more children. We saw the need of other children, and we think that is the philosophy that should be out there. We added three more bedrooms onto our home. Bathroom and... We, have we added two more bathrooms onto our home. That's pretty concrete before having anything in place, right? Yes, nothing was in place. So when that odd phone call came, it almost felt like divine intervention. Over the following months, the Harrises discussed and prayed and decided to go for it. 
They arrange a meeting with the mother in the parking lot of this Fayetteville church, and they tell her they want her daughters. Don't you think maybe you weren't considering all the possibilities, that this did. might be a I little bit more did. than you should take on? Elizabeth, I think we did consider those possibilities. But I want to be clear, why we were wanting to do this was because we had love for children. It sounds rash to decide to adopt three girls you haven't met, about whom you know very little. For us, it was not any different than doing an international adoption where you've not met children. The Harrises would soon learn some of the harrowing details of the girls' short but troubled lives. A drug-addicted mother involved with a string of sketchy men prone to criminal activity and abuse of the kids. The house reduced to ashes in a meth fire. Ugly stuff. In fact, by now, the three little girls are wards of the State Department of Human Services, or DHS. And how were they doing, all three girls? The two younger girls were doing great, just two normal little girls. The older girl had some problems, um, and she would have some outbursts sometimes. Adoption specialist Jan Wallace is brought in to find the girls a permanent home. By now, the oldest daughter is in therapeutic foster care, and the two youngest girls are in the home of Cheryl and Craig Hart, experienced and respected foster parents. You got the baby first. We did. She was cute. <laughs> she was really cute. What about the middle daughter? What was she like? She was just over two. She loved bows in her hair. She loved matching flouncy little tutus. She loved to get dressed by herself in the morning. But the hearts can tell the girls have already been through a lot. One sign, it appears the youngest, still a baby, has already been sleep trained the hard way. She didn't cry? Not really. Not much. You could see that she hadn't gotten any attention and she wasn't used to people, you know, fussing over her or whatever. So even at nine months she learned not to cry because... Nobody came. Nobody came. And the middle girl indicates some of the attention she had received was the wrong kind. She said, my baby sister, she's safe. And I said, yeah, she's safe. Why? And she said, um, I don't want the boogeyman to get me. I don't want him to get my baby sister. Mm -hmm. So it didn't take long to figure out that she had been abused. Still, the hearts say the girls never really acted out. They weren't violent in any way with any of the other kids. Never. No, never. Instead, they say these images show the girls' typical disposition, happily brushing their teeth, playing on the playground. This is the middle girl having fun at a football game. Our father. Our father. Who art in heaven. Art in heaven. And at night, saying the Our Father. Like any faithful Christian family, the hearts carefully taught her the Lord's Prayer. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Meanwhile, nearby, two other faithful parents, Marcia and Justin Harris, are hoping to take those three girls they've never met out of the temporary placement of the hearts and permanently adopt them to become their forever family. But there's a snag. DHS isn't making things easy, concerned about placing abused girls in a home with any other young children. I did not want the children ever placed there, ever, ever because as a family, they had no experience dealing with children with these issues. Correct. Wallace wants them in a family with no other small children. It'd just be better. For one thing, they could get full attention. They could get the therapies that they needed. But the Harrises insist the opposition from DHS was about something else, their faith. DHS was opposed from the first meeting that we had because they felt like we were a fanatical couple. That was their number one issue. So they weren't concerned about the girls, they were concerned about your faith. Yes, and they said it's gonna take more than God to deal with this issue. The Harrises hear all about it during a meeting with everyone involved with caring for the girls. And they had their therapists there, the caseworkers were there, everybody tried to talk to them so they realized how serious an undertaking they were asking. It just fell on deaf ears. How blunt was everybody being with the Harrises in this meeting? Did, some, did people say, this is a bad idea? Yes. And what did she say? She said, we each have a degree in early childhood development. Mm -hmm. We have a daycare where we have therapists on site, and we have God, and we believe in the power of prayer. The Harrises are adamant they feel they can handle the girls. And by the summer of 2012, despite all those objections, a judge approves the triple adoption. When the judge said, you're going to take the oldest girl first and see how that goes, and if things go well, then we'll gradually move in the other two. 
They literally fell to their knees and thanked Jesus. I'm not kidding you. Their prayers have been answered. The Harrises have the family they wanted. So how does their little slice of heaven <laughs> turn into a living hell? She just screaming in rage at the top of her lungs. And I said, this is what I'm dealing with, 8 to 12 hours a day. Stay with us. Twenty twenty continues with the Forever Family. Once again, Elizabeth Vargas. What do you think? <laughs> like any modern couple with good news to share, the Harrises take to Facebook to proclaim, "Unto them, three daughters have been given." I can officially announce what I tried to last February. Marcia and I are now the proud parents of three beautiful young girls. But the girls need to live in the home for six months before any adoption can be finalized. The judge decides the oldest sister, then six years old, would arrive first. Justin tells his three sons, then eight, nine, and eleven, the house will no longer be dominated by the Y chromosome. We're adopting girls, so you're going to have to wear pajamas from here on out. So which room was this? This was originally the oldest child's room. Given the girls' traumatic past, the Harrises take some precautions. So you had an alarm up here on the frame yes. that would tell you it would go off if the door was open? Yes. And then you had a motion sensor in case yes. she tried to leave the room? DHS said that it would make them feel safe because they had been abused, and it would make everyone in the home feel safe. And they take it a dramatic step further. This folded down and makes a bed. Did two of the boys sleep here? Yes, and then there was a couch that sat here. All three sons move into their master bedroom. Isn't that a little weird to have all five of you in one bedroom? And Not when you're bringing in children to adapt in a home that we don't know. My children that were first given to me, my biological children, those are the ones that we were going to safeguard first and foremost. The Harrises know these are little girls who come with big issues. But Marcia, an abuse survivor herself, feels she can help them heal. I'm sorry that your daddies that you had did those things to you. But your daddy that you have now loves you very much, and he does not do those things to you. Got it. In this video, she has a talk with the oldest sister. She'd entered the Harris home in June of 2012. If anyone ever touches you in an inappropriate way, look at mommy. Whether it feels good or not, I need you to let mommy know. Because it's my job to keep you safe and protected. Okay. Okay. <laughs> to an outside observer, all would seem well. The oldest sister even pops up in her pre-adoptive father's campaign ad, a violation of adoption law. Harris is told to remove the image. What were your first impressions of her when you met her? We loved her, and we still do. But almost immediately, there are clear signs that the Harrises have taken on more than they thought. She was a very hurt child. How could you tell she was hurt? Because in the very beginning, I, we, she would not attach anyone. She would come in, she cussed us out. She had a lot of anger. Anger that they say looked like this. The Harrises say these tantrums would ignite without warning. And I had showed DHS a video of her, and they're like, oh, good luck with that. She just screamed in rage at the top of her lungs. I said, this is what I'm dealing with, 8 to 12 hours a day. 8 to 12 hours oh a day? Goodness, it never stopped. It just was screaming. There were no tears, just rage screaming, non-stop. Given the fact that things go south so quickly, why would you proceed with the adoption? We thought things could get better. We thought with the yeah. counselor said if we loved them enough, that it would get better. And it never got better. Despite the ongoing domestic drama, the Harrises never waver. They proceed to bring the two younger sisters in, introducing them to the family pet, taking them to the duck pond. But their arrival only adds gasoline to the increasingly combustible household. When they see each other, it triggers old memories, that bad memories. She starts talking about biological mom to bring it back up, the things they had been through, things they had experienced. What were they doing? I would ask the middle one, I would say, what are you doing, you know, when you sneak out of your room? She said, I'm going to kill my brothers. Listen to this home video. 
Why would you tell Ethan you was going to kill him? Because he told me that. Who told you that? The bad man. The bad man? The middle girl discussing fantasies of murder with sweetness in her voice. Mm -hmm. What did he tell you to do to him? To kill him for real. As their fear grows, so does the surveillance. We would do three hour shifts of sleeping in the room. I would sleep for three hours, watch the cameras. Then Marsha would sleep for three hours, watch the cameras to make sure that they would not sneak out of the rooms. The Harrises would learn there is an explanation for what was going on. The oldest girl had been diagnosed with reactive attachment disorder, or RAD, causing an inability to attach with others. The Harrises would later get the middle sister diagnosed as well. RAD is an often misunderstood psychological condition that develops when a child's basic need for comfort and affection are not met. In serious cases, these children can become dangerous. This sounds like a family under siege. It is. The Harrises suggested we speak with these parents who also adopted children with RAD. They say the Harrises ordeal mirrors their own. You knew what they were going Absolutely. through. Absolutely. How? We adopted two children. The youngest one attempted to stab his brother on three separate occasions. And my daughter tormented her little sister, lit her baby blanket on fire, and cut all her hair off before the she, she was three years old. They kick you in the face, they spit at you. And their rages are with knives. As the situation rapidly deteriorates, the Harrises say they are at a loss. Their love, their child care expertise, their prayers, it's just not enough. The oldest sister especially is beginning to frighten them. Why did you feel so strongly that she was a danger? A six-year-old girl. She was going to kill me with a knife in the front and the back. She was going to bash her brother's heads in with a rock. That must have been scary. It was very cold. After only 16 days with all three girls under their roof, the Harrises say they can't take anymore. They call DHS and drop the oldest sister off at an inpatient psychiatric facility. But then, on a day visit home, they say she kills the family guinea pig. How did that happen? Uh, Her words no, to me were, I, I stepped on it until I felt it with my foot and I wanted it to die so that my brothers can hurt like I hurt. After that, the oldest girl's temporary removal from the Harris home becomes permanent. Still within her six-month trial period, her adoption is terminated. What did you tell this little girl about I why see. she couldn't stay with you? You know that you can't come back and live in our home. You're not safe. You have to go live where there's not other children. Coming up, the Harrises remain convinced the other two girls can be saved. But what lengths will they go to do it? There was a group coming in from Alabama that was supposed to pray over the children and get the demons out as an exorcism. Marcia and Justin told you there was an exorcism. The babysitter story, when we come back. We return to 2020's The Forever Family with Elizabeth Vargas. It is January 2013 and the Harris household is deep into its winter of discontent. We're not sleeping. We're at our wit's end. We've done all this counseling and nothing is getting better. The oldest of the three sisters is no longer there, but the Harrises say the middle sister, also diagnosed with RAD, is now acting out despite regular therapy sessions. Did you have any training to deal with this? We did our four years in child development specialist. I worked at Children's House Therapeutic Daycare Center. So we know it. And yet you both admit that you were completely at a loss. Even professional counseling doesn't even teach you to deal with children with reactive attachment disorder. And yet, despite all the difficulties, the Harrises are steadfastly moving forward with the permanent adoption process. That March, a judge grants their wish. The Harrises are now the girls' forever family. Justin goes public with the news on Twitter. His followers respond, adoption is great, and Justin agrees. But in reality, things were anything but. The first night they left me alone with the girl, they had this music blaring at her door, Christian music blaring. 
the main rule, they couldn't interact with each other at all. So and you were never allowed to have both girls in the room at the same time? No. Chelsea Goldsboro, the Harris's babysitter that spring, says she walked into a house governed by strange rules and even stranger explanations from Marsha. What did she tell you? That her children had demons and they could telepathically speak to each other. Demons? Mainly the middle child, she had demons and she would speak to her younger sister and tell her to do things telepathically. Like mind talk? Yeah, they were always separated and she could do it from in her room while her sister was on the other side of the house. And the tales of the supernatural don't stop there. They did tell me that a demon was like she was lifting up off the bed like levitating. The claim seems outlandish, but former DHS adoption specialist Jan Wallace supports Chelsea's allegations. So Marcia believed that the girls truly were possessed by demons. Yes. And that she told you the girls wanted the demons inside them. Yes. What did you say? I was pretty floored, <laughs> pretty uh, flabbergasted. I didn't know what to say. Chelsea says Marcia even tried to expel the demons herself. She was kneeled beside the bed and she had her like hands up praying and at one point she was getting really aggressive and you know like shaking the bed like she was trying to get the demons out. What was she saying? Send these demons back to hell, you know, get them out of my children, cleanse my child. Where was the child, the middle girl, while this prayer and the bed shaking was going on? She was standing on the other side of the bed screaming. And when that didn't work, Chelsea says the Harrises brought in some experts, spiritual advisors Hal and Alondra Parks from Birmingham, Alabama. There was a group coming in from Alabama that was supposed to pray over the children and get the demons out as an exorcism is what they said. When did this exorcism happen? I would say three or four weeks after I started working there. But they did not want me around because if your heart wasn't in the right place, then the demons would attach to you instead. Jan Wallace says she discussed the Parks' visit with Marsha later. Did you ask her, is this an exorcism? Yes. What did she say? She said it was. She told you it was an exorcism. Mm. The Parks denied our request for comment. They have previously confirmed a visit to the Harris house, but denied being involved in any exorcism. So does Justin. We are Southern Baptist. We do not do exorcism. I'll be very clear about that, period. You didn't bring somebody to the house to exorcise the devil? No. I mean, did we turn to prayer? Yes. Marsha and I pray every single day, morning, noon, and night. I mean, and never will we deny praying. The Harrises categorically deny all of Chelsea's allegations. They even dispute the amount of time Chelsea says she was in the house, claiming she only spent 36 hours total working for them. When the Harrises say you're lying about this, I want to give you the chance. You categorically stand by your story. I stand by it. Every detail. Every detail. Because it sounds pretty unbelievable. I know. Everybody tells me that, that I'm not lying about anything. By now, whatever the Harrises did or didn't do, they say it didn't work. And after all that effort to adopt the two girls, they decided just six months after adopting them, they could no longer stay in their home. This was after you fought and argued that you could do it and you couldn't. Not only couldn't you do it, but you gave up pretty quickly. Well, and you can say that, but when you've done everything and used every resource they've given you, and you've worked and done what the therapists have told you, you have nowhere to go. It wasn't working, and we tried everything we could. But I had to take care of my three boys. And if people want to judge me for that, I'm sorry. When you walk in the shoes and you live it, then you can judge me. As determined now to get the girls out as they were to get them in, Marsha reaches out to their former adoption coordinator, Jan Wallace. She's no longer with the DHS. I said, we are desperate, what can we do? But getting the two younger girls out wouldn't be as easy as it had been with the oldest sister. The clock had expired on that trial period. Remember that court ruling? The Harrises were now the permanent legal parents for the two girls. 
Wallace said the state could bring criminal abandonment charges if the Harrises tried to give the girls back. I said, do what? I said, people have failed adoptions. And she said, they're going to charge you with abandonment. They hate you. They despise you all, and they will charge you. Is that true? They would have been charged with abandonment? There's a process that any time someone gives a child back, they are charged, but they're not always found guilty. And the stakes for the Harrises were even higher. We were told that not only would you be charged with abandoning these two girls, we would lose our own three boys. Why would you lose your own children? Because once in the state of Arkansas, being charged with abandonment, you would lose your own children. The Harrises did have one controversial option to get their girls out quickly, and they were about to take it. It certainly got their new daughters out of their family, but it would cost the Harrises their reputations. An adoption gone wrong. Really disgraceful and reprehensible. A state representative embroiled in controversy. And it would cost the girls much more. I couldn't sleep for two nights. It just, it just it made me sick. I was shocked, and I wanted to say, I told you so. Stay with us. So our question for you here tonight, what do you think of the Harris' story? Do you believe it? And faced with what they say was an impossible situation, would you do what they did, give back your adopted children? Let us know on our Facebook page and on Twitter. Use the hashtag ABC2020. David and I will be right back. Twenty Twenty continues with Elizabeth Vargas and the Forever Family. In West Fork, Arkansas, the population of 2042 is about to be reduced by two. A mere six months since the Harrises officially adopted their two little daughters, they have had enough. How do you tell two little girls, we don't want you anymore? Well, I don't think we never said that. So what did you say? I just simply told them, you know, we're going to go live somewhere else where we feel like you can be safe, your brothers can be safe. But now their adoption is finalized and they can't simply return them to the state. They could be charged with child abandonment and lose custody of their three biological sons. So instead they opt for something called rehoming, a term borrowed from the pet adoption world. Rehoming is a legal loophole in the system that allows adoptive parents to basically give away their kids. There is virtually no vetting and no judicial oversight. And remarkably, rehoming at that point was legal in all 50 states. The question is, is were you so naive about what it takes to raise severely traumatized children that you naively walked in and in desperation naively got out? Like, just get them out. When I was threatened with abandonment and losing my own three boys, we had no choice. Marcia reaches out to friends, the Francises. Like the Harrises, they look great on paper. Marcia knows the wife from college, and the husband, Eric, was once a teacher at the Harrises preschool. I said, well, here's the situation, and I told her about the girls, and she said, well, she said, we've been praying about it, we really, we want to adopt. And were you so, fully honest about how challenging these oh, two yes. girls were? But see, they've adopted internationally three times, and they had a daughter with Rad, so they were very familiar with it. And they wanted to move forward. We said, okay. But within months of moving into the Francis home, an already tough situation turns tragic. The decision by Justin and Marsha Harris to rehome the adopted children inexcusable. The middle girl is molested by her newest dad. Bombshell reporting this week, tying state representative Justin Harris to an adoption gone wrong. The news breaks months later when police are alerted by an anonymous tipster. An investigation from one of our news partners uncovers a starting link between an Arkansas state representative and an admitted child rapist. What was your reaction? Sick and, and devastated. Don't you think you're responsible for putting that little girl in that home where she was sexually abused? This guy, I looked him in the eye. He worked for the Bentonville Public School for five years, did FBI background checks, did safe home studies, three for international adoptions. There's no way we could have known that he was a bad guy or a pedophile. Still, the Harrises launch into damage control mode, anxious to show that the girls were not the only victims. We were failed by DHS. When DHS fails adopted parents, they fail the children even more. He uses the state house as his backdrop. 
But his 11-minute press conference focuses mostly on the system and how it failed the Harrises. Justin offers few apologies. We were not prepared for children with severe undiagnosed reactive attachment disorder. A state representative embroiled in controversy. And outrages a nation. Justin shudders his Twitter account, but online, people are slamming the family values legislator. And on his voicemail, it gets even uglier. I just wondered why people like you wasn't in jail. I think you should be arrested for that. I mean, this is absolutely disgraceful and reprehensible. You are a monster yourself. Disturbing, disturbing story from a so-called man of God. That can't be easy for you. It's not easy, but we believe at the end of the day, my wife knows the truth and my three boys know the truth. And what else can you do? You can understand, though. It sounds from the moment you met this biological mother in a parking lot to the point where you get first one daughter, she's too much, we send her back, we'll take these two daughters, they're too much, we give them away. It just sounds like you guys are passing kids around like they're pets. But from an outsider's perspective, it does look horrible. In hindsight, things could have, should have happened differently. Not could have, they should have. But the point is, is other foster families Local DHS officials say they said you're not equipped to handle these three girls and their issues. And in fact, you admit you weren't. Elizabeth, if they said we weren't equipped for the right reasons, I would agree with that. The reason why they said we weren't equipped is because of our political beliefs. Maybe it's really because we you weren't equipped. Craig and Cheryl Hart, who fostered the two girls before they were handed over to the Harrises, are appalled at the way things turned out. It still bothers me a lot. It's hard to get over. And you blame the Harrises? I don't know if blame's the right word, but, uh, you know, I think that they caused it. They set into they set it, they motion, set it in motion a series yeah. of events. That's right. And they should be responsible for the consequences. Do you think you did something wrong? No, I don't think I did anything wrong. What but you have admitted you made mistakes. I mistakes think, and doing something legally wrong are two different things. Everybody makes mistakes. I mean, I make mistakes on a daily basis. But these mistakes involve the lives of three little Absolutely girls. Absolutely they do. And now the state police are investigating whether those mistakes might have been crimes. Coming up, what becomes of those three little girls? For the first time, we get to meet them. Will they ever find their forever family? Stay with us. <laughs> 2020 continues with the forever family. Once again, Elizabeth Vargas. We are heartbroken by this situation. Who is responsible for the Harris adoption disaster? The state police launched two investigations, and now the Harris family must confront the possibility of child abandonment and child cruelty charges. I was struck as I read through the second state police investigation into everything that happened at how much your boys talked about how much they were impacted by what happened. It's all been hard on them. It really has. But having them go to their school and serve a court order on them when we didn't even know we were under investigation, that really affected them very strongly. The state police concluded their months-long investigations and found the charges of any wrongdoing were unsubstantiated. Still, this summer, Representative Harris announced he would not run for re-election. At the end of the day, we knew it wasn't, you know, the best thing for the family. Through all the trials and tribulations, no one was more affected than those little girls. And for them, something you might call a small miracle has occurred. The oldest daughter, now nine years old, has reportedly been adopted into a family where she is doing well. As for the two youngest sisters, now five and seven years old, they're with two new parents and two teenage sisters. See for yourself. Okay, Elsa, how do you like my outfit? Hi, queen. Look at me. Their mother and father asked us to conceal their identity to make sure the girls' privacy will be preserved. My heart just went. The second you set eyes on them, there's 
no way to describe what happened in my heart. I just wanted to mother them. I saw them as desperate, abandoned little girls who were just in need of someone to love them. It is a moment they will never forget when two sisters danced their way into their hearts and their family. Though they want to be clear, it did take them time to adjust. In the beginning, she tested, is this going to be my forever home? Yeah. She just said, I know how this is going to work. You guys are not going to want to keep me, and so I'm going to act out. And when she did, we just said, okay, great, are you done? <laughs> Let's get to the bottom of what is, what's the problem? What are you anxious about? Did she ever actually come out and tell you, I'm anxious you're going to be like, the other families and she has said that oh yes. yeah yeah because for forever family for her she's heard it before mm -hmm. and it wasn't forever how long did it take for everything to settle down in the house i would say about a year mm -hmm. and this is me super super happy it was because it was my first day i was it was my first day to be adopted yeah in this family this is on mommy's birthday i didn't want to use a green photograph, so I color it purple because I love purple. The new Forever family are also devout Christians. I'm going to walk, walk, walk worthy of the Lord. I had the opportunity to spend some time with the girls, and I was struck by how well-adjusted and happy they seemed. Hi, Dad. Hi. The middle sister, ever curious, is captivated by our cameras, interviewing me with my own microphone. What's your favorite color? I think I like green. <laughs> Good answer. Why do you like green? Because it's soothing. It's what the color of the ocean is. But the sea's not green. The sea can sometimes look bluish green. They happily put on a show for us. Let it go. Let it go. Turn the back and let it go. They show me self-portraits with smiling faces. I glued the heart on in the middle and share their plans and their dreams for the future. This little picture of, is my orphanage. They're all going to have golly homes because I'm going to find them golly homes. The middle child crawled up in my lap and she said, do you know, Mama, God is going to use me to heal people. It is just one day, but I witnessed no signs of the violent, angry behavior or other rad symptoms the Harrises describe. Oh, yeah, I missed you. What did you do differently? Because the Harrises are also God-fearing, God-worshipping people. Faith is very important to them. I don't know the Harrises, so I can't speak for them. The Lord showed me from the very beginning that these wounded, damaged, mm -hmm. abused little girls, that's not who they are. We go back to the Harris home, where we see no sign of the girls who came and went, except in the yard where these pink bikes and a dollhouse sit like unguarded monuments to a misguided, if well-intentioned, dream. I did want to tell you both that um, I spent yesterday with the two girls, and they're doing really well. Yeah, that's good. Is there anything that you want to know about them? We, there's a lot we want to know. How is their birthday? I mean, how are they doing? Do they remember? You would lose your own children. The Harrises did have one controversial option to get their girls out quickly, and they were about to take it. It certainly got their new daughters out of their family, but it would cost the Harrises their reputations. An adoption gone wrong. Really disgraceful and reprehensible. A state representative embroiled in controversy. And it would cost the girls much more. I couldn't sleep for two nights. It just, it just it made me sick. I was shocked and I wanted to say I told you so. Stay with us. So our question for you here tonight, what do you think of the Harris's story? Do you believe it? And faced with what they say was an impossible situation, would you do what they did, give back your adopted children? Let us know on our Facebook page and on Twitter. Use the hashtag ABC2020. David and I will be right back. Twenty Twenty continues with Elizabeth Vargas and the Forever Family. In West Fork, Arkansas, the population of 2042 is about to be reduced by two. A mere six months since the Harrises officially adopted their two little daughters, they have had enough. How do you tell two little girls, we don't want you anymore? 
Well, I don't think we never said that. So what did you say? I just simply told them, you know, we're going to go live somewhere else where... She was standing on the other side of the bed, screaming. And when that didn't work, Chelsea says the Harrises brought in some experts, spiritual advisors Hal and Alondra Parks from Birmingham, Alabama. There was a group coming in from Alabama that was supposed to pray over the children and get the demons out as an exorcism, is what they said. When did this exorcism happen? I would say three or four weeks after I started working there. But they did not want me around because if your heart wasn't in the right place, then the demons would attach to you instead. Jan Wallace says she discussed the Parks' visit with Marsha later. Did you ask her, is this an exorcism? Yes. What did she say? She said it was. She told you it was an exorcism. Mm. The Parks denied our request for comment. They have previously confirmed a visit to the Harris house, but denied being involved in any exorcism. So does Justin. We are Southern Baptist. We do not do exorcism. I'll be very clear about that, period. You didn't bring somebody to the house to exorcise the devil? No. I mean, did we turn to prayer? Yes. Marsha and I pray every single day, morning, noon, and night. I mean, and never will we deny praying. The Harrises categorically deny all of Chelsea's allegations. They even dispute the amount of time Chelsea and there is an explanation for what was going on. The oldest girl had been diagnosed with reactive attachment disorder, or RAD, causing an inability to attach with others. The Harrises would later get the middle sister diagnosed as well. RAD is an often misunderstood psychological condition that develops when a child's basic need for comfort and affection are not met. In serious cases, these children can become dangerous. This sounds like a family under siege. It is. The Harrises suggested we speak with these parents who also adopted children with RAD. They say the Harrises ordeal mirrors their own. You knew what they were going Absolutely. through. Absolutely. How? We adopted two children. The youngest one attempted to stab his brother on three separate occasions. And my daughter tormented her little sister lit her baby blanket on fire and cut all her hair off before the she, she was three years old. They kick you in the face, they spit at you. And their rages are with knives. As the situation rapidly deteriorates, the Harrises say they are at a loss. Their love, their child care expertise, their prayers, it's just not enough. The oldest sister especially is beginning to frighten them. Why did you feel so strongly that she was a danger? A six-year-old girl. She was going to kill me with a knife in the front and the back. She was going to bash her brother's heads in with the rock. That must have been scary. It was very cold. How it failed the Harrises, Justin offers few apologies. We were not prepared for children with severe undiagnosed reactive attachment disorder. A state representative embroiled in controversy. And outrages a nation. Justin shudders his Twitter account, but online, people are slamming the family values legislator. And on his voicemail, it gets even uglier. I was just wondering why people like you wasn't in jail. I think you should be arrested for that. I mean, this is absolutely disgraceful and reprehensible. You are a monster yourself. Disturbing, disturbing story from a so-called man of God. That can't be easy for you. It's not easy, but we believe at the end of the day, my wife knows the truth and my three boys know the truth. And what else can you do? You can understand, though. It sounds from the moment you met this biological mother in a parking lot to the point where you get first one daughter, she's too much, we send her back, we'll take these two daughters, they're too much, we give them away. It just sounds like you guys are passing kids around like they're pets. But from an outsider's perspective, it does look horrible. In hindsight, things could have, should have happened differently. Not could have, they should have. But the point is, is other foster families isn't that a little weird to have all five of you in one bedroom? And Not when you're bringing in children to adapt in a home that we don't know. My children that were first given to me, my biological children, those are the ones that we were going to safeguard first and foremost. The Harrises know these are little girls who come with big issues. Mommy, hurry! 
But Marcia, an abuse survivor herself, feels she can help them heal. I'm sorry that your daddies that you had did those things to you. But your daddy that you have now loves you very much, and he does not do those things to you. Got it. In this video, she has a talk with the oldest sister. She'd entered the Harris home in June of 2012. If anyone ever touches you in an inappropriate way, look at mommy. Whether it feels good or not, I need you to let mommy know. Because it's my job to keep you safe and protected. Okay? Okay. <laughs> to an outside observer, all would seem well. The oldest sister even pops up in her pre-adoptive father's campaign ad, a violation of adoption law. Harris is told to remove the image. What were your first impressions of her when you met her? We loved her, and we still do. But almost immediately, there are clear signs that the Harrises have taken on more than they thought. She was a very hurt child. How could you tell she was hurt? Because in one of our news partners uncovers a starting link between an Arkansas state representative and an admitted child rapist. What was your reaction? Sick and, and devastated. Don't you think you're responsible for putting that little girl in that home where she was sexually abused? This guy, I looked him in the eye. He worked for the Bentonville Public School for five years, did FBI background checks, did safe home studies, three for international adoptions. There's no way we could have known that he was a bad guy or a pedophile. Still, the Harrises launch into damage control mode, anxious to show that the girls were not the only victims. We were failed by DHS. When DHS fails adopted parents, they fail the children even more. He uses the state house as his backdrop, but his 11-minute press conference focuses mostly on the system and how it failed the Harrises. Justin offers few apologies. We were not prepared for children with severe undiagnosed reactive attachment disorder. A state representative embroiled in controversy. And outrages a nation. Justin shudders his Twitter account, but online, people are slamming the family values legislator. And on his voicemail, it gets even uglier. I was just wondering why people like you wasn't in jail. I think you should be arrested for that. I mean, this is absolutely disgraceful and reprehensible. You are a monster yourself. A stir of adoption law, Harris is told to remove the image. What were your first impressions of her when you met her? We loved her, and we still do. But almost immediately, there are clear signs that the Harrises have taken on more than they thought. She was a very hurt child. How could you tell she was hurt? Because in the very beginning, I, we, she would not attach anyone. She would come in, she cussed us out. She had a lot of anger. Anger that they say looked like this. The Harrises say these tantrums would ignite without warning. And I had showed DHS a video of her. And they're like, oh, good luck with that. She just screamed in rage at the top of her lungs. I said, this is what I'm dealing with, 8 to 12 hours a day. 8 to 12 hours oh a day? Goodness, it never stopped. It just screamed. There were no tears, just rage screaming nonstop. Given the fact that things go south so quickly, why would you proceed with the adoption? We thought things could get better. We thought with the yeah. counselor said if we loved them enough, that it would get better. And it never got better. Despite the ongoing domestic drama, the Harrises never waver. They proceed to bring the two younger sisters in, introducing them to the family pet, taking them to the duck pond. But their arrival only adds gasoline. Sometimes look bluish green. They happily put on a show for us. Let it go! Let it go! To the back of the door. They show me self-portraits with smiling faces. I glued the heart on in the middle and share their plans and their dreams for the future. This little picture of is my orphanage. They're all going to have golly homes because I'm going to find them golly homes. The middle child crawled up in my lap and she said, you know, Mama, God is going to use me to heal people. It is just one day, but I witnessed no signs of the violent, angry behavior or other rad symptoms the Harrises describe. Oh, yeah, I missed you. What did you do differently? Because the Harrises are also 
God-fearing, God-worshipping people. Faith is very important to them. I don't know the Harrises, so I can't speak for them. The Lord showed me from the very beginning that these wounded, damaged, mm -hmm. abused little girls, that's not who they are. We go back to the Harris home, where we see no sign of the girls who came and went, except in the yard, where these pink bikes and a dollhouse sit like unguarded monuments to a misguided, if well-intentioned, dream. I did want to tell you both that um, I spent yesterday with the two girls. And they're doing what involved with caring for the girls. And they had their therapist there. The caseworkers were there. Everybody tried to talk to them so they realized how serious an undertaking they were asking. It just fell on deaf ears. How blunt was everybody being with the Harrises in this meeting? Did, some, did people say, this is a bad idea? Yes. And what did she say? She said, we each have a degree in early childhood development. Mm -hmm. We have a daycare where we have therapists on site, and we have God, and we believe in the power of prayer. The Harrises are adamant they feel they can handle the girls. And by the summer of 2012, despite all those objections, a judge approves the triple adoption. When the judge said, you're going to take the oldest girl first and see how that goes, and if things go well, then we'll gradually move in the other two. They literally fell to their knees and thanked Jesus. I'm not kidding you. Their prayers have been answered. The Harrises have the family they wanted. So how does their little slice of heaven <laughs> turn into a living hell? She just screaming in rage at the top of her lungs. And I said, this is what I'm dealing with, 8 to 12 hours a day. Stay with us. Twenty twenty continues with the Forever Family. Blink and you'll miss it. You think it'd be how to be saved? Or it was think? here that Justin and Marcia Harris were raising their three boys in a devoutly Christian household. Heavenly Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for today. When one evening after dinner, they received a mysterious phone call from a woman they had never met, the mother of three little girls, making a request they never expected. Will you please take? my daughters you know she's gonna lose her children but did you ask her why she was losing her daughters of course she didn't tell me much of anything take my daughters three sisters ages four two and nine months a strange request yes but not an absurd one the Harrises are known as child care professionals they hold degrees in child development they run a Christian daycare center called growing God's kingdom Thank you, Madam Chair. And Justin, running as a family values conservative, has been elected to the state legislature. Hi, my name is Justin Harris. I represent District 81. Isaiah, is it your turn to do the card devotion? Spend any time with them and you will see right away it is all about faith and family. God, I pray that you help me as I work through today. Marcia described Justin as a father. He's loving and patient and he puts his children first. I couldn't ask for him to be a better dad. Why does it make you emotional, Justin? Because I love my family. No way to describe what happened in my heart. I just wanted to mother them. I saw them as desperate, abandoned little girls who were just in need of someone to love them. It is a moment they will never forget when two sisters danced their way into their hearts and their family. Though they want to be clear, it did take them time to adjust. In the beginning, she tested, is this going to be my forever home? Yeah. She just said, I know how this is going to work. You guys are not going to want to keep me, and so I'm going to act out. And when she did, we just said, okay, great, are you done? <laughs> Let's get to the bottom of what is, what's the problem? What are you anxious about? Did she ever actually come out and tell you, I'm anxious you're going to be like, the other families? And She has said that, Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, because for a forever family, for her, she's heard it before, mm -hmm. and it wasn't forever. How long did it take for everything to settle down in the house? I would say about a year. Mm -hmm. And this is me, super, super happy. It was because it was my first day, I was, it was my first day to be adopted here in this family. This is on mommy's birthday. I didn't want to use a green photograph, so I colored it purple because I love purple. 
The new Forever family are also devout Christians. I'm going to walk, walk, walk worthy of the Lord. I had the opportunity to spend some time with the girls.